So introduce yourself a little bit. Uh, where do you come from? What are you studying? When did you come to the university? I am basically from Panipat, but I haven't stayed there for long. Okay. I was there till fifth grade, hmm. and uh, then I shifted with my father and started changing schools after three hmm. years. I came to campus in 2011, in BA, and you've been here. Yeah, yes. I've been here ever since. So what now, are you studying now? Now I'm in MPhil, my final year, MPhil hmm. second year. It's my dissertation here, and I'm in history oh, I didn't now. Know that. <laughs> In history, yeah, modern history. Uh, are you part of any organization? What are you doing now? Politically, yeah. <laughs> like I, I am, want you to say it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am part of uh, ISA All India Students Association. It's affiliated with CPIM and Liberation. Mm. And you're also the president of. Jane. Yeah, I am also the president of Jane. Jane US. Yeah, yeah Jane US. Uh, tell me a little bit about your family. Who all are at home? So I have a huge family. We are basically. You know, we live together and all of that. Oh, my okay. uncle, uh, I have like three uncles and one, uh, one of their sisters. But no. uh, two of my, uh, my father and my uncle are in army. So no. at home, uh, we have another uncle. So we do live differently. But no. yeah, we are a combined joint siblings? family. Do you have siblings? Yeah, and I have two. I have yeah two siblings, two siblings. like my own. Two and lots of cousins, I'm yeah. guessing. <laughs> lots and lots of them. So, uh, we are going to be talking about this movement that happened in the la last few months, in fact. Uh, um, we'll be focusing a little bit about this, the Atul Jari, uh, against Atul Jari, the movement that happened, and the enforced attendance, and we'll, uh, and, and the scuttling of reservations. But that's all that I'm going to say, that everything else uh, you tell me. So, uh, to what extent were you involved? Like, were you involved in all uh, the projects? Yeah, in these moments, I think, uh, so mostly earlier I was basically involved because I was part of an organization. Yeah. But in these moments, whether it was Atul Jori or Reservation or you know, any other things which are happening right now in the campus, I was properly yeah. in, I mean, inside. So, there. from the beginning? You yeah, yeah, I yeah. was there since the beginning. So, uh, Tell me a little bit about the trigger events, like what happened in the beginning and how, d why did these movements happen? Like uh, Atul Jori, yeah. reservation and attendance. Atten yeah. So basically, uh, I'll start with Atul Jori. Yeah. So this man, basically, uh, he has always been there since I came into the university. Mm. And we all, I think, knew one thing about him that women do not go and meet him. Mm. I never heard anything before that or after that really but yeah this was one unsaid rule which I knew about so I obviously understood ki, ha, what's mm -hmm. going on so I uh, remember this thing that uh, a newspaper clipping was sent to me that you know one of the women went and uh, sent a mail to Jory and now she is missing and after that only I received the mail and uh, because her father gave the mail to the Police. Hmm. So I received the mail and then it was circulated like uh, not by me but by uh, everyone like I think the police only gave it to media and media forwarded it to me. And after reading that mail many women from the same lab came out and said that you know she should not go down alone. Why would she have to face the wrath of it because she left her PhD also because of this man. And all so of just for clarity's sake, Atul Jari is a professor on campus. Yeah, yeah, he's a professor and he's been there for around twelve to thirteen years. Okay. Yeah, and he basically owns a lab. Like huh. in sciences, it happens like that that people basically, uh, you know, they are the ones. Uh, the professor is the ones through whom everything happens. So all of these students have lots of academic pressure, and you know, uh, basically, I have been in GSK, so I've seen cases that they threaten them on their face that you know i'll ruin your career or whatever but these women in the lab finally decided that you know we are not going to take it anymore mm -hmm. and then in the beginning uh, they were not very comfortable in coming out and all of that but because of a certain organization when they started you know maligning everything and uh, just giving two three versions of one incident then they thought that they'll you know they'll be like much more stronger and uh, courageous and then they came out hmm. so i was there with them since the beginning and then they filed the fr the trigger was because of uh, that 
uh, one women who actually uh, I think they knew. I am not sure if they knew. Or, I never asked them though. But once they told me that you know we actually didn't want her to be alone yeah. in the whole situation. That's why all of us decided to come out. Okay. So that was one trigger situation for Atul Jori. Yeah. And once there were eight FIRs, I think the whole university was. Yeah, so you were talking about the trigger uh, yeah, for so, other. Yeah, so at, for attendance, I think for attendance it was the circulars which came after uh, when they were threatening students too. Basically, first of all, it was unethical of them. So everybody uh, in the campus was like, we do not want attending system. That is like one base I think everybody agreed on. But because when the protest actually became huge. That was because of the threatening circulars which were released by the administration regarding they uh, like they will not allow us to give end semester they will not allow us to have our scholarships or they'll throw us out of the you know uh, hostels and everything. Mm. So after that, uh, I think the movement took another phase. Like yeah. It went on to another phase. And for reservation, I think for reservation. Uh, because we are actually from a very politically charged up campus mm -hmm. so we hardly we never actually <laughs> needed a trigger for that matter but every moment has yeah. its own trigger that way for reservation uh, i think it was ugc gadget mm -hmm. anybody who is reading the ugc gadget can understand that you know uh, the gadget is flawed in itself and it will take away all the rights constitutional rights given to the students in the campus and outside people who wants to be in the campus so the movement started from there it was a trigger when they uh, that that was also the uh, basically undemocratically they implemented the ugc gadget in the campus but uh, in this year because we had data Mm. of past one year yeah. that was a huge huge uh, i think uh, thing for us we have the data that you know people from uh, backward classes or uh, castes are not entering the campus that right. is not how this campus works so yeah that was one trigger because we saw the data what was the mode of protest taken up because as far as i understand it it sort of all three sort of uh, merged into one another so what was what happened basically first of all in the beginning what we did was we gave normal uh, protest ka calls hmm. okay and at different places and we tried to meet the administration and uh, all of that but the administration never even cared to meet us and whenever they met us they were like every uh, for reservation for example for reservation they'll always say ugc gadget and you know we are bound by it yeah and they are not by it. Uh -huh. <laughs> and for attendance they'll always say ki, you know we won't talk about it and i think uh and for atul jori they never met us yeah okay so that happened and after, because uh, atul jori also happened while we were in the movement yeah and so after uh, we, uh, see in around that time they were not meeting us but uh, I think uh, mostly uh, all of our mode of protest were uh, basically, you know, gathering more and more students yeah. and uh, to show our strength to the administration. They were all peaceful protest. We usually slogan, uh, like, you know, give slogans and we try to make the administration. Mm. They never met us. So mm. that was one thing. But And then we try to go out so that, you know, uh, the way we are projected outside, that should be changed. Our projection mm. in the media, our projection among the people that you know these students are just fighting against their attendance they did not know that we had so many issues with the administration yeah. so we decided to have a long march like the kisan's long march mm -hmm. uh, outside the campus after a certain period of time okay this uh, long march was from where to where the long march we gave a call from jnu to uh, parliament street yeah. and uh, they stopped us around i think solution okay um what were the just uh, tell me the concrete demands like what did you want the university to address so we have lots of them for the yeah, timing yeah. and if uh, somebody asked me one thing so I'll say remove the VC <laughs> okay. or, why, why do you say that because uh, see this man uh, he doesn't get logic mm -hmm. uh, we are in an educational institution okay? we are not in a military uh, you know structure or something that I have to listen to him yeah. like I have had experiences with the other VC also I think okay. all of us once at least met yeah. uh, the last VC and you know if you could convince that person that person would try to help you hmm. but this man he doesn't talk to you 
it it seems like somebody is telling him from above and like a parrot he just repeats it hmm. and that's why i think uh, you know somebody who is supposed to be a vc of a university like jnu which already had its own culture and everybody in the country i think knew that yeah. that you know jnu is a little different from any other institution and it's not because we are bad people or something it's because we are much more inclusive in our mm-hmm. nature mm-hmm. than any other university and this guy doesn't know doesn't know how to run it and it's very like visibly it's there mm-hmm. but if we so one of the demands would be ki this guy should be removed and yeah. i think a much more intellectually sober person should be our vc yeah and others would be obviously that all these decisions which were taken in the uh, like you know farce acs and everything they should be taken back whether it's attendance whether it's vc gadget whether and they, uh, you know atul jawari should be suspended yeah. uh, lama and uh, these cases against all the professors the minimum process of natural justice in the sexual harassment cases that for the pending inquiry they should be suspended gs cash should be brought back in the campus because that was the only institution we could trust and uh, for reasons which i should not say publicly they actually disband uh, you know gs cash to save their their assets just explain this a little bit what was gs cash just so, in a in yeah. brief so gs cash was basically a gender sensitization body against sexual harassment in yeah. our campus and we had elected members uh, from all the constituencies in the campus and uh, one of the major uh, you know baseline of elected members was that they had some kind of uh, you know uh, some kind of relation with gender hmm. in any ways whether with gender studies whether they have been part of the gender movements or in any other way hmm. so that people are gender sensitive and they know what kind of debates are going on r- right now in the gender gender field and everything and so that that they can understand yeah and uh, so this body used to the first main aim of the body was to basically sensitize uh, people in the university all the constituencies about gender and other stuff and then uh, the second which we used to call crisis management was basically mm. we used to deal with sexual harassment complaints right so, so what happened after this vc came yeah. he actually uh, one day he just realized that you know uh, he is supposed to have icc and not gs cash but gs cash has already inclined itself with the uh, 2013 sexual harassment law and uh, so we were safe we did it because i was there when we did yeah and nobody needed to disband gs cash and our last vc also approved of it and our uh, ec also approved of it so just for uh, just for a little bit of context you had been an elected member of gs cash yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, they all approved but this guy he comes up and just to save few powerful people and like for example if this case would have if gs cash would have been here and atul jori's case would have been in yeah. gs cash i i'm sure that this guy would disband gs cash now hmm so that happens and that's why he did it i uh, like there were pretty serious cases going on and he just disbanded because he can serious Basically. cases you mean like important people in the university important people obviously powerful yeah. people yeah. and gs cash always made sure of one thing that before the inquiry is over none of the names are out yeah and we always try to maintain the confidentiality but if uh, like but the icc on the other hand is been releasing uh, you know a complainants mail and all of that hmm. in the public yeah just to save their people hmm. and all of that so uh, we needed we need gs cash in the campus and obviously uh, we earlier were demanding 70 30 for yy and all of that hmm. so these were our basic uh, demands that you know we do not yva go say now it's 100 percent but earlier hmm. our demands were that it should be reduced to 50 right. and so uh, the whole package of demands basically comes from the way this administration is working now yeah. they are trying to scrap 9b yeah. and that is also one thing that uh, we see sitting in one chamber can decide he needs to take an opinion 9b is the extension you are giving yeah, to phd yeah for phd students yeah. it's the extension okay uh, who were the main leaders of these movements could you say they were leaders Like I think JNUSU. for uh, JNUSU is like elected body, yeah. so JNUSU was there. But 
i think one thing which i saw in the attendance movement this year uh, was that the leaders were at the background i mm. think all of us who are leaders mm. we were actually uh, what we were doing i think uh, were basically trying to convey few things but there was so much of anger in the students right uh, because this guy has been here for almost 2 years and all of that and people have had enough mm. so that was one thing which was there and attendance because it touched everyone so uh, people also took responsibility yeah. of the movement i think all the sfcs i uh, i just called a meeting i thought you know let's just try mm. but you know people did come like they came and then they were like giving uh, their opinions and then they were like giving uh, i say a uh, different kinds of modes of protest and all of that so they took the responsibility of the movement they felt a part of it it was not yeah. something ki somebody is coming and saying yeah. of course leaders have their own i feel uh, to give a direction to the movement leaders are important and they did their job well yeah. i think all of the people who were political yeah. <laughs> activists here. uh again just for clarity ssc is a student faculty committee member yeah yeah so they these are, are student representatives yeah they are elected members at the class level okay yeah for every center so, and yeah. for every class okay. in the center uh who were the people primarily participating were these uh, students of jnu of course everyone yeah, like uh, yeah everyone was a student basically yeah uh tell me about some specific events or personal memories that you have from this movement i know that the movement is still ongoing yeah, in yeah. some sort of way but some personal things that you i think one thing was uh jory thing really yeah. kind of affected i think uh, i i just thought ki yaar yeah, itna protection kisi ko kaise mil sakta i mm. never thought ki somebody will, will be protected so blatantly in campus yeah one i have no experience of any other campus okay and uh, i came here when i uh, just after my 12th grade so mm-hmm. i just have experience of this campus so even my thinking that way is basically i feel is basically made and is actually i i grew up in this campus yeah. so i never thought that somebody would be defended so blatantly by the administration mm-hmm. by the police or by everyone yeah whoever is supporting him that is one thing i i remember that uh, you know this Did guy you think that was was a disappointing in some way it was disheartening disappointing yeah. and everything uh, i was in shock because i remember uh, this never happens in our campus yeah so i was like uh, i remember somebody called me and told me that sls mein jory is there so, so i sls is school of life sciences school of life sciences where he is a professor yeah. and i went there and i stood in front of the stairs in the front main gate basically yeah. sls main gate and this guy comes out and i was there and i was frozen and i was like i didn't know what to do mm. i was just there i was standing and i didn't know what to do i wanted to kind of slap or him or do something yeah. at that point of time but just after 10 seconds i realized no i have to give slogans and then i started giving slogans right. against him but that was one thing i never yeah. thought ki i'll be in a situation where i'll please yeah. when somebody like atul jori would be there in front of me yeah. i always thought i'm a tomboy and i can handle things like that but yeah. that was one thing i always remember something that i remember from the movement is the press conference that the uh, survivors did that that was i think very yeah, courageous of I, them i i think whatever they did yeah this whole movement was like i never expected anyone from science schools to come out and right. you know say things when i went to the lawyers with them when i went uh, i whenever they have issues they call and it's like one thing they're very clear about i think that is you know we're together and we have to you know get justice in this matter that right. is also like yeah <laughs> now i remember the whole press conference one was yeah. epic i think <laughs> i somehow they did it I yeah mean, that was brilliant and also i think you know, the way they came out in uh, media as well after that they had interviews with people. yeah uh what about the uh, the motor protest that came up from the movement the lockdown thing how did that come up like how was that so decided ev- upon everything was basically uh, happening uh, uh, people were giving their suggestion yeah. suggestions and uh, that was happening and i remember lockdown thing was actually uh, it started because uh, chairpersons were changed 
and because of the different chairpersons, they were changed and then uh, the centers were locked. Hmm. That student said that why would you come and sit as a chairperson because you know you are not the right person to be here. So uh, the center wise it happened they uh, like uh, centers also uh, SFCs and other people they called me as well and I said like you know we all decided he can no issues with that and I think it was spur of the moment right. and they already were sitting there and then they called me and I was yeah. like no issues and then in the SFC meeting we decided he if we're doing it. And then let's do it on a larger scale uh, because everybody was thinking that you know we'll join, mm. we'll join, we'll yeah. join. So we uh, in the SFC meeting we decided we'll uh, do a school level lockdown at least uh, till the March, yeah. long March. So uh, that happened and then we had another SFC meeting and people were like no we should continue. Then we agreed okay let's continue. Mm. Then it went on and then there was some difference of opinion started coming up because of mainly lots of uh, academic and scholarship things which were going on yeah and then we had a sfc meeting and we decided Follow that we'll have just one last go at it and yeah. whatever the center level gbms decide okay. we'll do that so most of the centers yeah. they said Ki bhai, we should call it off yeah. then we did uh so you're mentioning two important things one was the sfc meetings which happened with the union and the central level GBMs. How often did these uh, SFC meetings happen with the union? Like so approximately? Uh, we used to call it every, uh, mostly when we were in the kind of uh, in the movement. Hmm. I think they happened every week. Okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, when we were in the movement hmm. and uh, we, uh, we called it whenever we felt we had to take a important decision. Right. and. People who are actually part of the movement, they should be involved. So we said, okay, let's call. SFC meeting okay. so we called uh, for every decision making I think we called an SFC meeting okay. we hardly took any decision without the SFC we had a plan of action in our minds but we always used to go and propose how were students mobilized for these projects like how were they told about like what was happening was like like some so, other activists have mentioned posters posters yeah they are, that was there yeah. so uh, post, poster posters we have a culture for them and uh, I so think was the NUSC bringing out uh, we were bringing out poster purchase but uh, our traditional ways of room to room campaign okay. and our uh, I think class campaign was one thing which affected the most and okay. uh, after the class campaign I say a uh, center GBS okay people were really mobilized in the center GBM so basically what happened we asked the SFCs to call the center GBM for every center mm -hmm. and uh, we personally went there like uh, mostly I was there in most of them okay so their motivating people was uh, I think easier because you get all the uh, you know uh, whatever they were thinking their thoughts and everything and uh, I think center GBMs because of the SFCs that was one thing which was like yeah. you know really really helped in the mobilization. Uh, by center GBMs you mean that uh, everybody in the center comes together and uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, the SFCs used to call for a meeting of the mm -hmm. center and then uh, we and the SFCs used to together mobilize from that center so okay. that people more and more people can participate in the GBM. Right. So yeah. most of the centers did it during the attendance also and during the uh, yeah, lockdown period as well. Was social media used at all like Facebook? Yeah, yeah of course like oh, that is the only media <laughs> we have left. So okay. uh, I think all the creative things were always there. People also uh, made funny charts and all of that. Hmm. People made memes and hmm. all of that and yeah. social media was of course used. I think WhatsApp helped us a lot and Facebook helped us a lot because that was one way to just you know give information yeah. as quickly as possible. Right. So we did use all of it. Yeah. Uh, how was was it covered at all by the mainstream media? I think uh, a jury incident was covered by the mainstream media yeah. because you know that was some so called masala they needed. Yeah. And uh, in the beginning, it was bad for us uh, because they were trying to take away complainant's name and you know okay. they all did try a lot of those things few of them understood I uh, that was there but in the beginning it was like it's G news and all of that they misinterpreted it and they ran it like that supporting jory basically mm -hmm. but yeah jory incident was covered and of course uh, yeah, attendance was covered but not properly yeah. because uh, there was just one side 
uh, I think uh, media channels like Times Now were like, why do they want, uh, you know, permission to bunk? Yeah. Like we were, oh, our debate was something else huh. during the attendance and they showed it as if we do not want to attend classes. Yeah, so there was so, some negative coverage. Yeah, also. it was negative coverage. Yeah. Most of it. Yeah. Uh, other channels just show some clippings about, you know, hmm. so many students are there at that block. That's it. Yeah. This press conference that happened uh, with the survivors of this incident, yeah. uh, how was it organized? Like, who contacted the media persons? And so basically, uh, everything was handled by GS Cash and JNSU. Okay. So uh, because JNSU has their own contact in the media groups, okay. uh, yeah. so we did uh, try to make it possible for everyone to come in. All of that we forwarded the message, hmm. and I think uh, GS Cash obviously wrote the appeal and everything, and they also forwarded to the right. media. So uh, it was all handled mainly by GS Cash. We were just assisting. Yeah. Uh, let's come to the repercussions of what happened. Like, do you think any of the demands were met by the university administration? What has been their attitude? I I think uh no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> None of the demands were met, but. I think all the movements in this time are basically, uh, you know, energizing people and, yeah. you know, showing them that we do not back down from your attacks after your attacks and all of that. And I think one uh, unsaid victory which we had is they could not do anything regarding attendance this semester. Yeah. That is there. Mm. And uh, from the quotes and stuff, we had other things like reinstating of our chairpersons in the next hearing and stuff. But... Uh, for reservation also, our uh, MPhil PhD, why uh, these uh, results are on hold because in we have like three cases going on. One is by Wapsa, one is by JNUSU, and one is by uh, PWD uh, students. Hmm. Uh, uh, just explain PWD. Uh, so basically, uh, just uh, say the full form. Yeah, yeah it uh, full form as in. People with disabilities, that's People, what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Pure, and, yeah. Uh, no, uh, I just wanted I, for the clarity. Achha, yeah. <laughs> I sorry. So uh, our campus students uh, in uh, who were like basically uh, blind students has uh, they went and filed a case for all the PWD students mm-hmm. because there were no they uh, they they are I think at the worst of it because they yeah. had not even I think only one person got admission out okay. of five person yeah. and. So in that case, we got some relaxation. So hmm. reservation, uh, the result of this semester is still on hold. Okay. Uh, so you spoke about the courts a little bit. Hmm. Uh, did you have, I won't call them interactions, did you encounter any other state agencies? Like this is, uh, just to explain it a little bit, this, was, this is why I was not asking you about the long march a lot yeah. earlier. Because I, as I understand it, there uh-huh. was a sort of a, a encounter with the Delhi police. We've had that, you know. Yeah, you know, I know. <laughs> yeah. uh, we have that in all, most of our protests because the kind, uh, see, if you leave the Vasan Punj police station yeah. and uh, because these people have been dealing with us for a long, long time. So yeah. they are a little more sensitive towards us. But uh, were I there protests outside the Vasan? Yeah, yeah, there were. So uh, we have had clashes because the police was also not giving any clear, you know, uh, any clear statement or anything like they were not doing anything they were not even investigating so we've had clashes like that with them as well outside the police station outside Uh, the police station also during the long march during the long march what happened they basically lati charged on us in that long march and uh water cannon because uh see we were peacefully marching and you know we did march uh, peacefully almost nine eight to nine kilometers without disturbing anything we were managing our own people and everything was going smoothly and still they kind of put barricades there and then this uh, when we asked them to like you know just let us go and everything mm-hmm. and they didn't and after some clash with students they started lucky charging like on us and uh, we uh, and they took clothes of women students yeah. there and you know they were literally pointing out at them and they're like iska kapda fado, iska kapda fado. one of our uh, uh, students have said that and um, the other students they were like abusing them to cigarette piti hai, to ye karti hai and all of that so yeah we've had clashes with the police there and after that they also filed a rioting case against 
students you mean the who police has filed yeah the police has filed because after this whole incident of how they treated women in the protest yeah. because uh, they also misbehaved with one of the journalists yeah and that case became a huge thing mm. and uh, because of that they filed a right case against us okay and especially the students who were detained basically yeah uh do you think the movement found any resonance in other campuses like do you think they were influenced by what was going on here i think uh, see i've been going to other campuses yeah. but one thing which they always say is that you know you guys need to do something because we look up to you okay and that i have always you know uh, while talking to when them, they say you guys they mean genuine genuine okay. they mean genuine like yeah. you guys need to do something means the genuine need to have uh, some stand or jane you need to start a movement so that you know everyone else can join in and all that that is there but at this juncture at this point of time i think all of these institutions who are protesting they're facing the same issues but their triggers are different yeah. they're not doing it because jane is doing it yeah. they did help us while uh, during the 9th feb that i yeah. agree that all of these people protested with us and all of that mm. in their universities they try to make sure that you know that uh, negative image of jnu is not there and you know they organized programs or leaders were called and all of that but in uh, right now at this point of time i think that is not the only reason yeah. and i don't think so that is even the second reason yeah. i think that their triggers are their own yeah. because they are facing the same issues whether it's fee hike whether it's bad mess food the major issue which is coming up is like the way they uh, deal with their messes yeah. like their administration doesn't even provide them hygienic food yeah. so this has becoming a trigger for them mm -hmm. nit uh, mizoram or uh, tamil nadu and all of these universities yeah. have been going through that. uh you said uh, they are looking up to jnu can you uh, so, understand why yeah i do i yeah. guess because you know jnu has oh, all jnu always had that credibility of being a uh, you know sober sane intellectual yeah. campus yeah. that was always there even after so many protests even after you know uh, when they tried to uh, kind of malign our image and everything we are still the top most university in social sciences mm -hmm. in the country and after, uh, so i think that credibility is always there that which we always say you know study struggle together mm -hmm. so uh, i think they look up to us because especially first of all we are jnu second mm. of all we are in delhi mm. so they think that you know we uh, we can lead a movement and just uh, because this campus is politically charged up so they also see us as you know uh, politically sane people who yeah. understands what's going on and how to politically deal with it and how to actually take give a direction to the movement or how, how to take up a movement or start a movement they think that we can do yeah. that uh, in, and also this campus stands up for itself yeah jnu always stands up for itself we do not as leaders hum logo ko utna zyada i guess mehnat nahi karna padta jitna shayad bahar karna pade so that is always there and that's why i think they think that becoming yeah. uh, this should be this should become the center of you know yeah. for example autonomy all yeah. of them has been saying there should be a national program on autonomy okay in, from jail because yeah. people would relate to us and they'll come to us so that all of them can meet each other through us oh that's a good plan yeah <laughs> uh well, i mean if you're the president of jnus i think you can't keep it hidden from your family so mm -hmm. <laughs> like how does your family see your uh, um uh, involvement in protests in movements so earlier they thought it's a uh, phase okay mm. like in the beginning yeah. because i've been in the campus i think during 16 december movement also i was yeah. there so uh, i lied at home and then came here yeah. <laughs> so they saw me on tv or in some debate and uh, they thought ki it's a phase it will go away and everything and i always uh, have this thing that i talk to my parents uh we we do not have this culture in our state so mm. i'm from haryana so we don't usually talk to our parents much so yeah i mean yeah we like that it's like even if we talk we like ha mamma mai theek hu wo theek hai bye yeah but then when i was more and more active i started going home less and less yeah so they realized ki acha this is going on and now uh, they're scared <laughs> okay my uh, i think they scared after ninth fair okay yeah that was the only time my mother in her life first time she told me that you know ki just give me a call 
in every three days not even <laughs> every day every three days just give me a call and tell me that i'm fine and yeah. now that i've become president now they see me uh, at lots of places and you know openly kind of speaking against modi and stuff and then she hears mob lynching then she hears how the lich in the country are killed and everything yeah. and so she, that way she is a little scared but i think she supports a lot my mother okay. is one hell of a woman that way like um do you feel uh, targeted by because of your involvement in these movements do you feel targeted by i don't know say university administration online trolls Um, yeah online i think we jnu people we are targeted because we are from jnu yeah for online trolls that is there but yeah uh i think uh there are so many reasons being a woman being yeah. a political activist yeah. then from being from jnu and then if you leading a movement because you're jnu as president you have to have to do that yeah so when you leading it you become the face of it and uh, then you have to take the backlash and of course administration they what whatever is happening in the world and even if i'm there even if i'm not there they send me a notice okay that you're called for an inquiry yeah. this has happened a number of times now yeah. they've stopped counting these letters <laughs> i've had so many of them do you think other activists on campus are also targeted in a similar yeah, way activists are targeted on the specific i got another one ha huh? are so interestingly geetas just got a notice and we <laughs> were just talking about notices that uh, activists are getting from the administration and she's just got it during the course of the interview so <laughs> um so do you think all activists are being targeted like yeah. this yeah i i know this for a fact that all the activists and especially who are known people in the campus i it just a guard should know your name yeah. <laughs> that's it yeah they don't need anything else and uh, a guard should just know except the abvp guys i just want to mention that that except the abvp people everyone else in the uh, campus is getting notices yeah notices and not just them i think individual students yeah for example if a chairperson is complaining so uh, a spanish ones the uh, the guy who became the chairperson of french also yeah so he can name his own center people very well yeah so even the individual students who are just there because you know they thought this is wrong the yeah. way you behave is wrong so they also get notices okay yeah. so it has actually crossed the lines of being an activist uh, by abvp you mean the right wing hindu yeah, uh, right -wing. student organization okay uh So just finishing up. Uh, not that the movement is over, but now certain modes of protests have been called off. Uh, in hindsight, would you say that uh, were there any mistakes that were made? Was there anything that you would do differently? I think. I mean, you uh, can say no. Also. <laughs> no, I can say no, but uh, uh, I don't want to. <laughs> It is. I am not saying everything went correctly, and I am not saying I have. not done anything wrong huh. uh i think uh, the one thing which i did wrong was uh was the one thing where jenuta came to our, our human chain and uh, when i announced it everybody was so excited about human chain that nobody listened to me hmm. so uh one thing was uh, there i always felt that you know that miscommunication should not have happened everything was very clear just explain how like, uh, so, okay. sequentially what happened so what happened we gave a call for human chain and uh, we were uh, we gave a call for uh, ad protest at ad block the next day yeah and one day we gave a call for human chain mm -hmm. uh, so uh, jenuta also joined our call for human chain jenuta so that teachers association jenuta teachers, teachers association and so uh, they made a request there and they said ki you know uh, we have not yet sat down and decided whether we want to go to ad block or not because of the court case hmm because the court has said that you can't protest at ad block hmm. so uh, we said it's fine anyways we are going to the ad block tomorrow and so what we can do is we can have the human chain in the uh, hostel area hmm. so that was our plan and it was decided hostel, school area uh, no oh, hostel, in the hostel it area. was in the evening no? okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah from ganga daba to uh, we said thought ki we'll have it, uh, till chandrabhaga or something so uh, it was decided a little late because jenuta replied to our uh, message yeah. a little late and then they uh, you know kept their concern and all of that i announced it 
एट द गंगा ढाबा वैन द्यूमन चेन वॉज सपोज टू स्टार्ट बट एवरीबडी वॉज सो एक्साइटेड लाइक नहीं यहाँ मत बोलो चलो एंड लाइक ओके एंड देन वी स्टार्टेड मूविंग एंड देन आई ऑल्सो ट्राई टू कन्वे टू दी स्टूडेंट्स there individually that you know why i'm saying that you we should not go we already went to ad block once before yeah. and it's not even a big deal mm. so i think that miscommunication actually harmed right. the moment uh little okay at that point of time it okay. all came back to us but yeah. at that point of time uh, of course there were people who got angry there were people who got okay. disappointed i think that could have been avoided uh you spoke about it a little bit but do you see any similar movements happening in uh, other campuses right now because of uh, yeah uh, i think punjab university yeah. was one of the example and uh, alawad university the university uh, actually they marched like 2000 people marched in that university against the fee hike yeah. that is there and uh, this across the yeah. country they had a huge movement and the whole uh, i think the whole protests started from fdi yeah so all of these uh, institutions which have uh, i think uh, they are uh, they uh, were uh, not there in minds of people for protests and yeah. stuff they also came out i think and hcu is always there i think they known for their uh, protest and everything but rohit vemula movement was one huge huge uh, movement for the country and for uh, institutions in, uh, educational institutions in the country Do you think the current government has anything to do with what is happening? They have everything to do with it. Like they have everything. I think we owe our huge bulk <laughs> movements to this government. I guess. We, yeah. I don't guess. I'm sure. <laughs> Because I think the way this government has been working and the way they have been appointing their vice chancellors everywhere. Yeah. And these uneducated fools. I think they all have PhDs, but they are still uneducated. Mm-hmm. And. uh you know all of these people actually run the universities as of they are sitting on some military post okay there are mm-hmm. some kind of governor or some kind of general there so that's how they run and educational institutions are not run like that yeah. even in jnu i think the people who were there in the formative years of jnu they came and they spoke and they are like you know it should be ethically and morally run yeah. uh, educational institution but now these people are destroying all the little bit education higher education we have uh, had in our country and uh, that's why i think these movements became huge because the uh, attack was so much that you know there is no breathing space mm-hmm. and uh, right now even uh, whatever university you go to now all of them always say this one thing ki you know we are also waiting for 2019 let's try to form yeah solidarities for 2019 what's, so that what's uh, so that 2019 may we will have elections and okay i hope that we throw out these people from the state power so i everybody in all the institutions i have been to and they all have this one thing yeah. in the mind and people who were there as supporters not just students the whole actually the point is not just students the staff in the universities the karmacharis in the universities the teachers in the university all of them whether they were supporters whether they were you know up, uh, in opposition of abvp a- 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 or bjp they are the ones uh, uh, as well who are actually saying ki yaar ye log kaise kaam kar rahe hain mm-hmm. you know? uh, this is not how education system should run yeah. okay uh just speaking about uh this movement or these three movements that happened almost parallelly uh, what has changed for you at a personal level because you have been an activist before this also before you uh, you became president or not do you think it changed anything i think i've learned a lot yeah that is there and also uh, learned in terms of what in terms of organization or in, terms of- in yeah in terms of organizing also yeah. and uh, also about uh, you know how administration works i guess yeah. and how the government works and how foolish we behave sometimes when we think that you know everybody would be on the same base of moral and ethical grounds yeah. where you know you can actually have a discussion and solve out things that also was a myth in my mind where i thought you know acha they won't cross this line atul jori wala case broke that myth also ki yeah. it doesn't happen when somebody is trying to protect uh someone of their own they crosses every every boundary whether it's a sexual harassment case or anything else. yeah that uh, is one thing and 
personally other other than that i don't think so i had a personal life during this phase <laughs> okay yeah so, so that, learning to deal with that yeah, not no, having a personal life yeah, <laughs> yeah. but i was okay with it yeah. earlier also because i was an activist but uh, uh, i love doing what i do so yeah. uh, that never came there but yeah i've learned patience mm-hmm. was one thing which i yeah. learned um so you said you were uh, in your second year of mphil what are you planning to do after that i i hope they'll try uh, let me continue with my phd okay the kinds of inquiries i have on me attempt of murder and stuff cases i have on me so i am hoping that they let me continue with my phd but of course i will remain an activist to the issue okay uh, till i'm here in the campus and maybe i'll try to join any other form of politics once i'm over the okay. right. so activism will continue for you yeah i yeah. would love to i yeah. love doing this so who's put the attempt to murder case uh, kadam our dean of students uh, okay. and i was not there with <laughs> let me tell you that <laughs> like i was outside coming and telling students the way uh, the mess fees and all of these hide mm-hmm. uh, so i came out and i told them i was talking to the students that you know this is not happening this guy is not listening to us at all and the other uh, hostel presidents and all of them were inside and then few students also went what's going on when i was coming mm-hmm. out they were just going inside and uh, they blocked vice president sonoya khan inside mm. so then these uh, students was like what are you doing and all of that and they wanted her uh, out mm. and then this guy went on and he filed a case against us saying that uh, basically the officer sent <laughs> some other activist who he remembered maybe from there he said they were basically trying to kill me and people can see in the video this guy is <laughs> pending there and he is so same way that there somebody actually from the back said ki itta chaplusi kya karke kya karoge sir nahi bhi isi ban paoge itta chaplusi mat kijiye students ka baat suniye and then he is like kaise nahi ban payenge itna log to chaplusi karke bana he actually said that he actually said that people who were present there they all told told me that he actually said that so he is that kind of a person so he filed a case of attempted so murder so this is a police case yeah it's a police case and it's going on 